Thoughts on uh, great guard and this Badgers basketball program from a basketball coach at the college level. Let's talk about it next on Badgers on Wisconsin. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers, your team every single day. Thank you so much, as always, uh, for tuning into the show. Today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors, the number one place, the right parts, the right fit, price guarantee. Go to ebaymotors.com, get the perfect fit for your ride or die. Uh, let's just let's just start the show. As always, when we get good guests on, man, we try not to waste time. We got Scott Gothier on, um, assistant coach, Lindenwood, director of basketball operations, Lindenwood University, director of basketball operations. He's been a coach for, coming on, about 20 years? Coach, yep, yeah, about about twenty years, about 10, 10 on high school and ten on the collegiate level, and a Badger fan. So let's go. Um, I want to start here. You and I have been talking a lot on Twitter, just back and forth, like DM messages after games, talking about what's frustrating, what's good, what's bad, what you're seeing, and I, eventually, I was like, I just got to get this dude on the show because he's gonna make people smarter. And I'm humbled that you're here. I want to just start with some of the narratives from a, the fan base's perspective, things that people talk about a lot and just get your perspective as a coach, um, valid criticism or things that maybe aren't valid. Let's start with in-game adjustments, specifically defensively, specifically when you see what happened, you and I talked a lot after the Indiana game, right? That, that middle pick and roll, the lobs at the rim to wear. What are you, what are you looking at and thinking in that moment? So uh, first of all, Ryan, thanks for having me on. I, you know, I love, love your passion and what you do for the Badgers and the community and us sports fans, but particularly like, I know we really got into the Indiana game and then saw with the Illinois game, the, the, the frustration I think that everybody's feeling is, you know, where they just ran the same play over and over again in the second half and, and where went, I think it was 11 for 12 from the field because mm -hmm. it was basically all layups and dunks. And, uh, you know, the, the issue that people have and, and the frustration is, you know, they're, they're playing drop coverage with the middle ball screen and, you know, try to, to try to not talk about people's heads and stuff. Drop coverage means that the big that's guarding the middle ball screen, his job is to stay between his man and the ball. So when the, when the guard or whoever's coming off that middle ball screen, the, the Badger defender, in a lot of cases, Stephen Crowell, is in drop coverage. That means you don't have anybody on the X. And when we say not have anybody on the X, that just means you don't have the help defender on the backside guarding the rim. Um, so, the, so the drop defender is responsible for the roll guy, his man setting the pick. And he's got to drop and stay below that roll man and keep dropping and try to con contain the ball. But the issue is so – if, if the, you can't, you shouldn't give up a play at the rim. And then if the guard keeps it, once you get to the restricted arc area, then you got to make a play on the ball and force a contested shot. And I think what's happening with the Badgers over and over again is they're getting caught in between, right? Because Ware was getting behind Crawl or Winner or whoever was in drop coverage. And then other times, if they drop to the depth they're supposed to, then they're not challenging the shots, you know, six, eight feet from the basket. And it's an easy, it's a easy Galloway got in there and got a couple, couple easy baskets. So it, it's, you know, they're kind of getting caught in between of execution of that coverage. So it is an execution thing for sure. And one of the things we talked about was these players have been in the system for a long time. Like the, the drop coverage, the principles that Bo Ryan put in place haven't changed at Wisconsin. Right. So there's there's it's tough to justify a lack of execution. If you're a coach on the sideline, great guard, let's put ourselves in great guards position. He they're coaching this a certain way. The players aren't executing. At what point do you say we got to do something different or like you're a coach? Do you just say, hey, you got to execute what we're trying to do? Yeah, no. And that's a great and, and I think that's the battle because, you know, I'm you and I have discussed and it's easy to put it on guard and the staff like, why aren't they doing this and that? And or if it's a personnel issue you know, why aren't they trying something different? But specifically with the Badgers in the drop coverage like that is, you know, the only other options you have at the five position is Carter Gilmore or Nolan Winter 
and Winter's a freshman, and he obviously struggles with physicality because he's just not, you know, he needs another year or two in, in the weight room and stuff like that. And then, you know, Carter Gilmore is it does a solid job defensively, but he has, you know, athletic limit, you know, limitations. And so it, it's like, what else? If you can't really change personnel just because we've talked about their lack of depth, especially at the five position. So then, you know, the question that you've brought up and other guests and we've talked about is, well, how about you, you know, try, try something different blitz, blitz a ball screen, which is doubling, doubling the ball screen, or you could play flat coverage and have that help defender on the X on the backside to take the roll, man. But then, you know, you're also giving up the, the lift three from behind. So it's, you know, it's just a frustration. Like when you see where go 11 for 12, you know, why not try something different? And obviously it's hard for us to judge the coaching staff on that. Cause we're not in practice every day and we don't know what they're talking or what they've tried or, or what they think they can or cannot do. Yeah, that's and that's fair. But it, oh, I apologize. My dog is in the background annoyingly. Um, but at some point, I just feel like in certain matchups, your players, for whatever reason, like there's certain matchups that give certain players issues or certain games that where a player maybe doesn't have it. Maybe he, he's a little under the weather. Whatever it is, it's not working. And this has been – honestly, this has been my biggest frustration with, with guard. It feels like – and we can go to the Illinois game too, right, where it felt like they found a matchup on wall with the mask that they liked. Yes. And eventually – like, I like some of the defense that Wolves playing at points. I, I thought it forced the mask into some shots that were tough, but eventually you you got to do something different, don't you? 100%. That was my thing. Like, I was, you know, when I first was watching the game and I was looking at the matchups, I was kind of surprised Wall was on the mask just because the mask, I know he's a bigger player, but he's a bigger guard. So, Illinois obviously loved that match. I thought maybe they put Klesmet on Damask or even Chucky. Um, and then they actually they actually had Chucky, I believe, if I remember correctly, they had Chucky on Shannon for, for a majority of the game. Um, and they had Klesmet on Hawkins, which I thought maybe Hawkins would have been a better matchup for Wall. Um, but I know at times they think Wall's their best defender, but – to your point, when it just became evident, um, the mask was beating Wall off the straight line drive on the perimeter, and then he was backing Wall up down into the post with the backup, the backup game, and he was consistently getting the six to eight feet. And I know people are saying he was making tough contested shots, which as a coach, that's all you're trying to force. But sooner or later, when he's doing it each and every time. I just thought maybe they would make an adjustment off of it or try personnel. You know, I know stores, maybe stores athleticism could have given a different look, or I know they're probably hesitant to double, double down when he would back up in the post because they don't want to leave a shooter. But I guess my issue with it or anybody's issue is Damask went off for 31. Shannon went off for 19. So that's 50 of their 93 maybe try something, make, make somebody else beat you. If Hawkins hits six threes to beat you, he hits six threes, you know, uh, Goudier or whatever. He, if he hits three or four threes, just don't let their best guys do the same thing over and over again to beat you. Yeah. And I, I want to, you know, where the frustration lies. Yeah. And I want to keep diving into this. Oh, we have to take a break for our friends of the show, but I think one of the things I've, I've said consistently is you don't have to change the principles are fine, but eventually you have to send a tendency breaker, right? Eventually, yep. like it's not even that I hate Wall on on, on Demat. Sorry, like he, he, there were some tough shots he had to hit baseline, mid range jumpers. Like those are kind of tough yep. shots. But eventually, if you just send another, or if you try fronting, you like do something different to change the dynamics of what's happening. And then the next play, play him straight up again with Wall, and maybe in the back of their head, now he's looking for that double because you sent it the previous play. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you could tell the mask as he started cooking, you could tell he wanted every time. And you could even tell that Tyler Wall, um, you know, lost a little confidence in guarding him as well, you know, to your point. So that's why I was talking about, you know, maybe switching up the, 
the matchup or like you said, du doubling it or double down on it just to give him a different look and you can go right back to it. Um, but, you know, he just, you know, he just took over the game and it didn't seem like the Badgers had an answer for it. All right, we're going to take a quick break for our friends of the show. Come back with Coach Gothier. Continue talking about adjustments, the bench, uh, John Blackwell, all things Wisconsin Badgers basketball. Really excited for this one. First, a quick break for our friends of the show over at eBay Motors. eBay Motors remains the number one spot to find all your car parts, the right parts, the right fit, the right prices. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers, but it is the absolute perfect place. If you have any type of car issues, anything you're looking for, over 122 million parts go over to eBay Motors because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, not cash. All the parts at all the prices you need, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP today. Bring home that win. It's fast, it's simple, it's easy. The prices are incredible. And with Guaranteed Fit, you're going to get the right part the first time, no hassle. Keep your ride or die alive over at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions to apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, let's 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 get Coach back on here. Um, Coach, I do want a quick second. Where can people follow every, anything you have going on, Lindenwood University? Um, how can people follow along that journey? Yeah, so um, obviously you can see uh, on X or whatever, I'm Coach G at STL. Obviously, I don't really, due to my position or whatever, I try not to uh, – I don't do a lot on X or Twitter or whatever just, you know, because I don't want to – create you know create any issues or stuff like that but uh you know lindenwood lindenwood basketball um lindenwood.edu uh, basketball uh, as well and then you'll see me out i'm i love coaching and talking ball i'll like and favor a bunch of stuff but i try as i've gotten a little older i try to stay away from uh personal commentary you know as i'm watching the badgers or other teams or whatever because you know, you don't, you don't want to criti criticize others. Cause I, I know everybody, everybody thinks they know the game of basketball and even myself included, but uh, we always don't know um, everything. So I try, you know, I try as a coach, you don't like to be criticized. So I try not to criticize others. I just, I try to be fair in my evaluations. Let me ask you this. Cause obviously you're a Badger fan, but you're also a coach. How do you watch Badger games? Like, are you secretly like, like, uh, why would you run that? Are you kind of, you don't have the coaching hat on. How do? You, how, what is your game day like? So it, that's a great question because in the past I've always had, I've always watched games differently because I've always had a passion for coaching and I played in high school. You know nothing after that or anything. But now that once you get into it and I've been on the college side and you know you're on synergy all the time and you're watching stealing from other coaches what they're doing or doing not doing. Like I'll be sitting watching a basketball game with friends or my wife and stuff, and I'm yelling stuff at the TV or saying, "Why are they doing this? Why are they in drop? Why are they not flat hedging?" Or, and they're all like looking at me as like, "What are you talking about?" So I'm always looking at you know things where I can try to see like how would I try to do that or for that for that middle ball screen or whatever. How would you play it with the personnel and stuff? So I, I try to look at it from a strategic thing and then I'll also watch games. And if there's a set that I like or whatever, I'll pause it and get out, get out, you know, the diagrams and start diagramming it up and store it away for future use and stuff like that. I just, I just love the X's and O's and the strategy part of the game. That's why the game of basketball is so great. Well, let's talk X's and O's strategy part of the game. This is another, and I want to ask you as well, coming up on something, you know, some positives of the program, the, the start of the year, the things Greg Gard has accomplished and kind of get a balanced look at this. But another thing that has frustrated me, I just want your take on it. It feels like never having be able to play a zone, never be able to go to that change up for a few possessions is something that you could use as a benefit. It feels like that's, to me, that's frustrating as somebody who's also coached, never having that, that you could go to. Um, where are you at on, on that? Because obviously you're a man-to-man -man guy. We talked about it, but right. curious your take. Yeah, so it's a great question, Ryan, because, you know, we talk about it in our offices every day when we go into the game. Um, and, you know, a lot of coaches are, we're going to do what we do, you know, no matter what, if they're good enough to beat us doing what we do. Um, you know, and, and I, I, I see why you do that because you believe in what you do and you work on it every day and you recruit to it and stuff and that. My thing is, though, 
if you're, it's still no matter how much X and O's or how much we think we know, the game of basketball, especially on a collegiate level, is about the Jimmys and the Joes and not the X's and the O's. So, like, if your Jimmy and Joes are better than my Jimmy and Joes, then I need to look at it differently of what adjustments or what things would we might have to, you know, do differently from our normal routine to beat a specific opponent. Um, so, you know, like you said, whether it's throwing out a possession and two or zone or, or going to a three quarter court to try to, you know, to try to maybe drain some, you know, by eight seconds off a shot clock. So now you're only having to defend for, you know, 22 seconds or 20 seconds of a possession than the full, you know, than the full possession, stuff like that. Um, you know, doubling a ball screen, this and that. I just think when you don't have better players position by position, you know, it's kind of like Bill Belichick on the football side, no matter how great the Patriots are, he's always talked about and his coaching philosophy is, is I'm going to study the opponent and I'm going to take away what they do best and make them beat me another way. And I think that's kind of what, and I know Bo Ryan was, you know, he was straight man to man and Bo Ryan, mm -hmm. you know, they did what they did. And I, you know, guard was a part of that staff and it's been a long time. I mean, he's been great at every level as a coach and this and that. So I know I'm sure his philosophy is the same way. It's just, but you know, sometimes when you're at Wisconsin or whatever, and you're playing some other teams, you're at a disadvantage from a personnel side. So, you know, why not, maybe throw something different in a game plan or whatever to, to increase your chances of winning or in the case for them, you know, they've lost seven out of nine, you know, somehow figure out a way to snap yourself out of this. Well, and I think there is something to the fact, and for the record, I agree with you. I, I think there, there could be a few more adjustments and a few more wrinkles, but there are coaches that over adjust and there are coaches that, Every, every time something doesn't go right, there's, I've been a part of a staff that we started a year with one offense and halfway through we changed because, oh, it's not working. Well, the new one didn't work either. And then where are you at? So, I mean, I'm sure you've seen that too. There is something to be said about being consistent into your principles as well. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. Because if, it, you know, if you try to master a bunch of different things, then you're, you know, or you try a bunch of different things, what happens is you're not good at anything. So, you know, most coaches and staffs and the Badgers are really good at, you know, this is our non-negotiables. These are our principles. We're going to do these each and every day and we're going to become really good at that. Because like to, to your point, when you're out there always experimenting or trying different things or whatever, you're never good at anything. So you have no identity. And the one thing you can say about guard and the Badgers is if you watch them play or you watch them practice or anything or you just ask any fan on the street, they know the Badgers identity. And, you know, that's a, that's a big thing. That's something we struggled as a coaching staff this year with our team and stuff is if somebody, if you would watch us Ryan and watch our games, you know, you would probably say what, you know, what, what's your guy's identity. And, you know, that's, and that, you know, that's a big part of it. All right. I think, I think we both talked around it and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think we both feel like there's a middle ground here where you, you have your identity and that's, that's primarily for the Badgers man to man. Uh, they played certain principles, but you, it would be nice to have a little more flexibility when it looks like the other team has found something. I, I think we're both kind of on the same page there. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, for example, the most recent example with the mask, um, you know, when the matchup with wall wasn't working, you know, throw a different look, you know, throw, you know, you know, maybe throw Blackwell on them or Klesman or Chucky or even AJ store. I know defense isn't his specialty, but maybe just giving a different look to the smack to Damask to just try to try something. Cause once a player gets comfortable and confident, you're in trouble. So you, you know, you always try to make sure to change it up or, throw a different look or a different guy at them to try to get that, that player out of that comfort zone. Cause once they're in it, I mean, we, we saw what happened on Saturday. 
Yeah, it was lights out. Uh, we're going to take one more quick break for friends of the show. Come back with Coach. I want to talk about John Blackwell, great guard, uh, transition defense, and kind of just defense in general. What what does he think is broken here? Because it has not been up to the Badger standards. We're going to talk about that next on Lock and Badgers with Coach Gothier. But first, a quick break for our new friends of the show. And I am excited about this one. Uh, brand new friends of the show over at Amazon Fire TV. And it is, listen, Fire TV is your destination for sports, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis. And for me, I need things that are easy to use. I've got like a lot of spinning plates in my life. I need something I can just plug it in and it's simple. It's fast. The user interface is incredibly intuitive. That is Fire TV 2AT. Millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Um, and recently, Fire TV launched Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from all your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us over here at Lockdown. We're in on this, plus most pro leagues, college conferences as well. Fire TV lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more. It keeps you up to date in the world of sports. March Madness is coming up, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. It is, again, it's simple. It's easy. I have it. To learn more, visit Amazon.com Locked On Fire TV. That's Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. You will not be disappointed. So, Coach, one, one of the things we talked about a lot, we talked about just in the previous segment, was the the principles this team is built on, right, from Bo Ryan to Gray Guard. Um, defensively, though, this defense feels broken, and I wanted to to pick your brain. What what's the biggest issue with this defense right now? Absolutely, Ryan. We've been talking about it for the past couple of weeks, but you know, defensively, that that's the thing. Batters are known for their defense, um, especially fundamentally. But you know, we talked about it. Synergy is a, a software data analytic video analytic tool that we use. Um, and it has everything. And if you go through it, it, it rates everything analytically and the Badgers transitionally transition defense, they're currently rated as poor. They're giving up 1.12 points per possession. Um, you know, and their half court D they're given, they're rated poor in synergy as well. 0.94 per possession. They're, they're 13 out of 14 in the big 10 and opponent field goal percentage and last in opponent three point field goal percentage. So you know, I can't remember the last time the Badgers have been so poor fundamentally defensively. And I, I don't understand because, like we talked about earlier, it's a veteran team. I mean, you're talking Chucky, Crowell, um, Wall. They've been they've been there, um, you know, so I'm sure it's driving the coaching staff crazy, um, especially the, the fundamental breakdowns, basketball one on one that they're breaking down. You know, we've we discussed it in the Illinois game. They lost that in the last nine, 10 minutes of the game transitionally. Um, they, they gave up a couple of transition baskets, um, open threes, one time store store and uh, Blackwell regarding the same guy. I don't know who messed up, but then it, it, it was a long closeout and they gave up a layup. It was, and it was after the Badgers had either taken the lead or had tied the game. And, you know, if you're giving up transition baskets at the clip they are, it, it's hard to overcome that, especially when you're playing, you know, high level Big Ten teams trying to trying to win big games. Yeah. So if, if you're the coaching staff here, it, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. What what do you do at this point in the season? Like, have you been a part of a team where it just didn't work? I mean, at some point you are who you are, and there's not a lot you can do. Yeah, that's a great question because you know the one thing would surprises me about the 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 defensive st statistics for the Badgers in transition, it's not like they're an overly aggressive offensive rebounding team. You know, they're not sending, they're not sending three or four guys to the offensive glass. They're they're a team like most teams that send you know send at minimum three guys back. You know because you don't want to give up a transition basket. So. You know, and it's not like they're leading the country in offensive rebounds and stuff. That's just not how they're built and made. So, you know, to your question, I mean, I, I unfortunately, I don't have a lot of good answers how to fix their transition issue because, like you said, they're sending at least three guys back, and it's just a lack of execution and communication or getting the ball stopped 
or whatever is leading to the issues, which, you know, it's game. They've played 31 games. So even if they didn't have a lot of experience returning, you would think, you know, that would be cleaned up by now. And, or especially now when you're talking about crowd, Chucky, Tyler wall, those guys, those guys have, have many years of experience in the Badger system. So that, that, that's, I'm sure is driving the coaching staff crazy is, you know, what, you know, transition defense is pretty basic. I mean, you figure out, get the ball stopped early and high, protect the basket and extend out and locate out the shooters. And it just seems like there is a breakdown, a fundamental breakdown way too often in these games, especially down the stretch, that's that's losing them ball games. Hey, let me ask you this. I, I have a theory. Um, <clears throat> I've thought about this a couple times this year. Previous Badger teams, like you go back to last year, the year before, they really had to scrap on offense. And I feel like that created an intensity level on defense, right? Like we, we have to get over this screen. I have to contest this. I have to match up in transition. Is it? just as simple as this year's offense is better. And then the intensity on defense, it hasn't felt like every possession is as important. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's a really good point because they are much better um, offensively this year. And I think especially earlier in the year when they're having a lot of success and they had what, 10 or so games where they scored 70 points or more, um, which you don't really see Badger teams doing that very often. And I think in their mindset, it's almost like they thought they could just outscore opponents and the defense was like you said, if we're on a possession by possession basis, maybe wasn't as important to this team. And as you get deep into the big 10 season and you start playing these teams and going against these coaching staffs and you, they know, they know you just as well as you know yourself. And, you know, they, they forced the Badgers taking some things. The Badgers do a what? away from them and you know these games are more possession by possession and you know grinding out possession by possession and if you can't get consecutive stops um you're in trouble and the badgers offensively have cooled off because i think just the grind of the big 10 season and facing good teams and coaches that's you know they're not scoring at the offensive efficiency that they have been earlier in the year or in the non-conference part of the schedule. So that makes getting stops and being fundamentally sound possession by possession defensively. And I just don't think this year's team for whatever reason is wired like that. And I want to finish up here. And again, I hope definitely hope to have you back on the show again. Um, just continue talking about just basketball. Big picture, where are you at kind of on this program, Greg Gard? There's a lot of back and forth with Badger fans that are really frustrated, Badger fans that also Badger fans that point to the, the multiple coach of the year in the Big Ten, big two Big Ten titles, 63% of winning percentage of in, in his games. Like, where are you at just big picture right now with your frustration level, your optimism for this team, this program going forward, Greg Gard in general? I know that's a super loaded question, but I'm just curious kind of where you're at right now. And this is actually something we really yeah. haven't even talked about. Yeah, no, and I think, you know, because, you know, I'm as big a Badger fan as anybody. Um, and, you know, you got really got excited. I mean, what, we're three weeks removed from them being number six in the country, eight yeah. and one in the Big Ten or whatever oh, it was. Um, you know, so you really got your, yeah, you got your hopes up. You know, you're thinking this is at worst a second weekend team and maybe farther. Um, and, and, you know, so that that's the frustration level. And I think, you know, there there are positives with what guard in, in the future and stuff, because I think getting somebody like A.J. Store out of the portal is, you know, something that the Badgers and guard specifically haven't been able to do the past couple of years. So that ups their offensive prowess and their athleticism. Getting Daniel Freetag coming in um, on the, you know, the next recruiting class. I mean, he's a special different type of athlete explosive type of player that the Badgers haven't gotten recently but then the frustration lies though too is you have somebody like the mass that comes in here was 58 miles from Madison you know played at southern southern Illinois for four years you know comes in and drops 31 on the Badgers and then you know the frustration 
um, because I know the 24 and 25 classes, particularly in the state of Wisconsin, are deep and really talented. And now they got free tag, but, you know, they've missed out on a couple others, you know, Knob going to Duke and some other guys that they've missed out. And if you just look at some of the Wisconsin guys that they haven't gotten the past couple of years, you know, like the Tyrese Hunters and, you know, some of the, if, the, the kid that's at Iowa State, we played against them earlier this year. Ryan, I think he's an NBA. I think when it's all said and done, we're going to see him play in the NBA. I mean, he's six eight, can yeah. really shoot it, um, extremely skilled. So, I mean, there's just been a lot of talent for whatever reason that the Badgers have not been able to keep home. And, you know, you look at Marquette and some other programs are getting a lot of local or regional players that if the Badgers could be getting one, two, three more of those guys, you know, it'd be a little differently. And I also, I was blown away by this. I was reading an article or something. If the Badgers don't make the second weekend this year, I think it would be seven years um, Mm -hmm. that they haven't done that, which that kind of blew my mind because, you know, when guard took over, you know, they were making sweet 16s and, right and and elite eights and stuff like that so it's hard to believe like if if it doesn't happen this year you know seven years um because you know they've been success i mean they it's been a successful program it's just you would like to see them capitalize on some of the talent that's in the state and the surrounding states that right now for whatever reason they don't seem to be getting those guys and the narrative around the badgers is they play slow Low and this and that and I always got frustrated like that because if you'd watch the national championship team and and the final and the team that lost to Kentucky they they scored they were top 10 in the country offensively you know and they could score with anybody and even this year's team you know from a pace standpoint and as offense efficiency has gotten has gotten way better um, but you know you wonder if that narrative or that thought of what Wisconsin basketball is if that's hurting them on the recruiting front, or if it's just the, you know, the kid, the players in the state aren't connecting with Badger basketball, you know, that's, that's, that's the frustrating part or, you know, the question that as a Badger fan that people have is like, why are we not keeping some of these guys in Madison? Yeah, that's a fair question. There's a lot of talent. Um, next couple of classes are, are loaded as well. And honestly, I'm not sure how many of the Badgers are going to get with the way it's trending. And um, yeah, it's it. there's a lot of talent. There's been a lot of talent there for a while. I would say this, and I've said this before. I don't, I maybe not as huge on you got to get the in-state kids if you get talent somewhere else. I, I do think there's an element of those kids should be easier. So it makes sense to put resources there. Um, you should be able to land kids that are, who are closer to family because they want to play by family. And, and Wisconsin is the program and state. But either way, like I feel like the recruiting has to get better because I think the depth on this team and see, I, I said we're going to finish up here, and now I can, I'm going to keep going because I could keep talking ball with you, man, all day. But it feels like the other part of this is that depth on this team hasn't been good enough for several years under Greg Guard, and that leads to the starters playing two minutes, and it stems partially from recruiting, quite honestly. There's a couple yeah. misses, and if you have that, you're not going to have the depth you need to compete at a consistent level. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned depth because I was gonna I was gonna point out to that too because you and I have talked about that and the frustration with the lack of depth with this team, um, you know, and like you said, that's you know that's that's a lot has to do with recruiting and missing on guys or for what guys leaving, you know, they've had some uh, key reserves that they were counting on to be here that have left. And it puts a lot of pressure with the portal and the way things are now. I know you have 13 scholarship guys, but as a coach, you know, once you get past seven or eight, you know, I was talking to the Kansas basketball staff this summer when I was working camps with them and their philosophy was kind of like, okay, we, we need to get eight really good guys and our ninth and 10th guys we need to try to get them on board where they're going to be developmental guys where you can maybe redshirt them. And then, you know, your 11th, 12th and 13th guys need to be like program culture guys, because, you know, once you get past eight, nine, 
it's hard to keep guys happy in today's world. And they got people, whether it's agents, family, friends, AU coaches, high school coaches in their ear, like, oh, you can, you know, you, you should be getting a shot or we can mm-hmm. get you somewhere better where you're going to get more minutes. So it, it really, it makes recruiting even more difficult because if players aren't playing, you know, if they're the eighth man getting 10 minutes or like look at Connor season this year, you know, it's going to be really hard for the, the coaching staff to retain him just from, cause there's going to be other people coming after him and, and, you know, trying to influence them to leave. So it's hard once you get past seventh man in your rotation, it's really hard to keep all the mouths fed and keep people happy. And it, it it's, you know, that's one of the downfalls with the, the today's portal and just the way college basketball is trending. Yeah, that's a really good point. It, it, it almost makes you think you need to target a couple one year guys for specific roles coming off the bench. You know, like, Go to go to a lower level and find a, a burly six eight guy who you know can be a little physical. He maybe not even skilled or anything else, but we're gonna have him for one year and he can fit that bench role for one year. You know, or you look like you know a guy like Max Klesman. You know, when they brought yep. him in from Wofford, you know, like you know he's turned out probably better than the Badgers ever ho- hoped. But like you said, maybe to help with your depth, go get you know go get a one year guy from a low mid major, even a, a D two guy. Um, that, it, you know, can be a specialist or give you a year or, you know, I know you've talked about it a lot um, on your shows recently. Like I would love for them to go, go get a five big. That's just a rim protector. Yes. Probably doesn't have any offensive ball skills yes. whatsoever, but just have them rim run, you know, run the alley and contest shots at the rim. That's one way to fix breakdowns defensively is if you have an eraser at that rim, it covers up a lot of mistakes. So, you know, maybe, maybe change a little change in the type of player they go after to, to get a rim protector that not going to score with his back to the basket or whatever, but just gives you a different dimension. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. It gives you, it augments what Steven Crowell does. Right. And I think if you have that, then in the middle of that run against Indiana, when where is, yeah, I think he had in a stretch four or five lobs, right? In the middle of that, yeah. you, you can put in your Steven Vogt type ish player. And listen, yeah. I'm not saying those are easy to get, but you, you need something up front. I think that's a little different going into next year. Um, coach, I'm going to wrap it there because I have kept you way long. And we had a technical issue on this show. We, we had a power <laughs> outage. So this is actually going even longer. And um, I really appreciate the time. I hope we can get you back and do this again. Absolutely, Ryan. Like I said, any anytime, I man, I you know I can talk. I know we talk a lot off air. I can talk ball with you all day, all night. So anytime, I'd be blessed enough for you guys to have me. You know, I love to hop on with you. No, I love it, man. We're humbled to have you here. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in as always. He is Coach Scott. You're over at uh, Lindenwood. Really do appreciate his time on Wisconsin, and we'll talk tomorrow. <laughs>